Hello again and welcome. Michael Pozzola here. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Value Capping Video Rant. This is the 2018 Belmont Stakes Edition. Very exciting times because we have the possibility of a Triple Crown winner this year. Let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I am the author of the best-selling book, Handicapping Magic, co-author of the classic Pace Makes the Race, I'm the creator of the original online racing form, which you can find at posttimedaily.com, and the creator of the Black Magic family of software. The latest version is Value Capper, Black Magic Software 2.0. I've done a whole course on the concept of value capping, which you can get for free at valuecapper.com. So, the 2018 Belmont Stakes, exciting times. I'm telling you, there is nothing like a Triple Crown. I've been completely blessed to have seen three Triple Crown winners um, live and in person because uh, I was in New York. And uh, I saw, going backwards, Affirmed, at Seattle Slough, and Big Red, Secretariat. And I've got to tell you, I don't think I will ever see a more exciting, more heart-stopping sporting event ever than Secretariat's uh, victory, 31-length victory um, at, uh, at the Belmont. It was that you can't imagine the wall of sound that was there. But of course, I was, you know, beginning my <laughs> journey into pace handicapping. And I remember when they put up the fraction, uh, it was 109 and change as I remember, I, I thought I was gonna see one of the biggest tragedies that no racehorse could sustain that kind of pace over a mile and a half, or I was gonna see one of the greatest victories ever. And it was one of the greatest victories ever. So uh, I don't know if we'll ever see another cult like Secretariat. Um, but we might see another Triple Crown winner. Look, Justify is the best colt in the 2018 Belmont Stakes. Is he Secretariat? No. But is he the best in this field? Probably yes. However, he's got a couple of things going against him. And there might be a value play in the race. Now, to find a value play, Look, the principles of value capping say that we look for a horse that we like, that the public shouldn't, preferably running against a flawed favorite. We wait for our price and we let the bet make, make us. In other words, we get that felt sense that it's a really good bet. Well, in this race, there is a horse that we like, a colt in this case, Justify. Yeah, the public should like it as well. Just below it on the line is another colt that may have a shot if a number of things happen. If Justify doesn't get the lead, if Justify gets pressured, if Justify declines, and if this colt gets a clean trip and a good ride. So let's get into the details. I'm going to review with you the pace scenario of both the Derby very quickly and the Preakness, show you how Justify faces a similar pace scenario in this year's Belmont Stakes, how it might be a little different because of the rigors of running all three Triple Crown races. Uh, Justify is the only other one besides Bravazo to be running in all three. See if you can find value and also take a quick look at a couple of the undercard races. I've got a bomb at Evangeline at a nondescript maiden race, but it's the kind of race that I'll bet. So. Let's get to work. I want to show you all of that so you look over my shoulder and I'll take you through the 2018 Belmont Stakes. All right, so before we get into the nitty gritty of the handicapping, the pace analysis, and the value capping of the Belmont Stakes, three important points. Number one, this is not meant to be a touting video. I don't tout horses, I don't sell selections, never have in my decades in this industry. It's rather to demonstrate the principles of value capping, to bet horses you like, that the public shouldn't, preferably running against vulnerable favorites, 
to wait for your price and let the bet make you. Let me tell you something. I can do a whole dissertation on each of these points. And in fact, I've done that. There, I did a, a free a course for you, jam-packed with good information no matter what kind of handicap you are. It's called the Value Capping Revolution Basic Training Course. Get it for free at valuecapper.com. I guarantee you, you will get something out of it, a new insight into how the modern game is played. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, enough of that. Two, second point. I'm making this days before the Belmont Stakes. I don't know the updated weather information. They're expecting some weather. I don't know what the late changes are, if there's a late scratch and so forth that could upset the pace matchups and so forth, okay? And the third thing, value investment. The, the point of value capper, the potential value investment plays are price dependent. That means no adequate price, no bet. In other words, if I point to a horse and say, yeah, you know, I think this horse will be great, but I'll need to get a certain price, and that price doesn't come, I don't bet it. And at the point that I don't bet it, I don't care what happens. Oh, you were wrong about it. No, I wasn't. I didn't bet. That's the point. And if I do bet it and it runs up the track, that's part of of the game. See, the nice thing about playing price horses, you don't have to hit a large percentage of them to make a very nice success of the game. All right. Now, as far as the 2018 Derby and Preakness, um, that turned out pretty well. Uh, we're, I'm going to briefly go through that. We're going to go through the Belmont Pace analysis, and then we're going to go through the value capper analysis. Now, thanks again for the kind words about the 2018 Kentucky Derby and Preakness rants. Um, remember with the Derby, we had Justify right up there, Audible uh, kind of in the second position, Justify with a big gap, much bigger field. Um, you know, that, that Justify Audible exacta was split by good magic, but pretty good. And... It, it, even on a sloppy track, it, it, it did that. Boy, I thought I thought Audible would get second. Now, from the Kentucky Derby rant, I projected that pace at 46-3, 1-11, and 2. And as it turned out, the first call was much faster. It went 45-4, not too far off on the second call, 1-11. From the Preakness rant, I thought Justify would put down, um, again, it came up as an unpressured race, I thought it would put down somewhere like a 46, 111 and 1. And as it turned out this time, the first call was much slower. And again, we were two-fifths of a second off at the second call. So pretty good work there as well, again, on a second track. This time, um, Justify was pressed very, very hard by good magic just about until the stretch. And then had to withstand the closes of Tenfold. More about him later and Bravazzo. Now, out of the box, the Preakness came up early. And, of course, Justify comes right up there. Tenfold right behind them. Again, the exacta got split by Bravazzo. If we look on the other side where it says pressured, and again, these are projections. So... It was unclear how far Good Magic could press. We now know he pressed him to the stretch. If you set that up on a late bias, guess what? Comes Justify, Good Magic, Tenfold Bravazza. We got the Superfecta right there. I don't think it would have changed any of my betting decisions there, uh, except Tenfold would have looked like a better bet there as well. And as it turned out, Justify hung on to win. Now, why do I talk about all of this? Um, again, you know, yeah, okay, great. Had the super effect, a big deal. Didn't pay very much because Justify won and Good Magic was in the mix, okay? So with that in mind, let's take a look at right out of the box what Value Capper does with the 2018 Belmont Stakes. Uh, newsflash, it's got Justify right on top. Now, there are a couple of things to note. Justify is in top. Now, that gap from 2 to 1, that's the value capper odds line, to 6 to 1 down a tenfold is enormous. The other thing is that there is a big gap from those four horses, Justify, Tenfold, Restoring Hope, and Noble Indy, down to the rest of the field. So that's where I'm looking. Big red warning sign. Value capper's got something in it called the value advisor. And the value advisor puts this race up as red 
at Zen consider passing. Like red, yellow, green, caution, <laughs> go and stop. Why? Well, the Belmont is a mile and a half. That is not a distance that is very um, consistent with pace handicapping. It's what they used to call, the old timers used to call a jockey's race, if you will. Now, there's some pace we can do, but it's an iffy proposition. Plus, we have a short horse on top, you know, a strong horse on race top. That's a very short price. It's justified. That's not the way to make a great value play when you've got a really strong horse on top. And then we've got an unknown horse in Bronkowski, and we'll get to that, Gronkowski rather, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, rather than go into a fraction by fraction analysis that I did, in the, and if you want to see how I do that, go and watch the 2018 Kentucky Derby and Preakness rants, and you'll see. And it comes to the same conclusion that AccuPressure does. So let me show you what AccuPressure has from the Value Capper software on this race. Justify projects to have the lead at both calls. However, in the first call, it looks like he might be pressed by Noble Indy, maybe restoring hope when we see tenfold a little behind. Now, if you look at the second call, it looks like Justify has an enormous lead. That's not to say that he'll have a 15-length lead. No, no. That will say that based on what he's been able to run, those, those second calls of 111 and change, he can have a lot left in the tank to go forward for the rest of the race. A couple of other things to note. It's an, it comes up as an unpressured race. Okay. Also, there are a couple of closers, Blended Citizen and Vino Rosso, in case there is a lot of pressure, those horses can come into the um, into the exotics. And there are also two what AccuPressure calls need to lead horses. Now, what do we mean, mean by need to lead? Well, look at Justify. Every one of its wins, the horse was on the lead at the second call. Not only that, if you look at the first call, it's only been not in the lead by a head in the Derby, and by a length and a half back in that allowance race in the mud at Santa Anita. But of the 20 calls that we see, 18 of them have been on the lead, and all his wins have been on the lead. Similarly with Noble Indy, it's showing three wins. Now his three wins come when he's had the lead at the second call. He was on the lead on the first call in his maiden and a close second in both the Louisiana Derby and the allowance race, but both at Gulfstream. Today, Noble Indy adds blinkers, uh, takes blinkers off. Now, whether that, that means that he'll be closer or not, it's anyone's guess. He's also got a different jockey. Castellano takes them out here. So there may be some pressure coming from Noble Indy. What I'm saying is we don't know what Justify can do without the lead at the second call. And we don't know what Noble Indy, well, we've seen twice what Noble Indy has done when he hasn't had the lead at the second call. And you might say, okay, the Kentucky Derby you can, you can forgive, uh, but the Risen Star where he didn't get the lead, he just ran an even race. So that's what I mean a need to lead. A horse that doesn't have the lead doesn't do very well. So, okay, let's play what if. If it's an unpressured race, we got Justify, then Tenfold, Restoring Hope, Noble Indy. If it comes up as neutral as the position would project, we still get Justify, Tenfold, Noble Indy. Then we get down to Restoring Hope and Vino Rosso, Vino Rosso being one of the closers. Interesting. Let's say, okay, all the speed collapses, what happens? We still get Justify, Tenfold, Noble Indy surprisingly hangs around there, and Vino Rosso. Now, the thing that's similar about all of these projections is that Tenfold comes up second to Justify, but Justify comes up with a big gap as to be expected. Can we say that Justify is a vulnerable favorite? Well, yes and no, in that his numbers are so strong, especially if this race comes off as unpressured where that two to one odds going down a six to one on tenfold is huge. Now, if I want to throw stones, if I want to say, 
can justify be vulnerable. And again, as a racing fan, oh, it's so exciting to see a triple crown, right? I, oh, it's so great for the sport and everything else. But if I'm thinking as an investor, can I throw stones at Justify's chances? Well, look at the race he's had in the Preakness. He had in the Preakness. First by a head, first by a head, first by a half, pressed all the way around by good magic, and then held on the charge of uh, Tenfold and then Bravazo. Now, that is a hard race. If you notice his other races, relative to that race, they were pretty easy. Also notice the diminishing winning margins. By that, I mean his first race in Maiden, he won by nine and a half. The allowance, he won by six and a half. Santa Anita Derby, he won by three. The Kentucky Derby, by two and a half. The Preakness, by a half a length. Now, look, this is a champion horse. It's won it, and everything it's been asked to do. He's just, it, this is a champion colt. Five out of five races. But, have to ask yourself, the Triple Crown is a grueling thing for a three-year-old colt. He's, this is only justifies only one of two uh, Colts who are doing all three races, Justify and Bravazo, right? The Kentucky Derby, he won. Preakness is a very tough race. So is the 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 travail of uh, the, the the pressure, the the exhausting nature of the Triple Crown going to take something out of Justify? given that he had a very hard race last time. If he wins in spite of this, he deserves the Triple Crown. Okay? The other, thing, the other question you might ask, speaking of the other cult that, that ran in all three of the Triple Crowns, Bravazo. It's like, hey, Michael, you showed me this nice thing, Justify Tenfold. They both came out of the Preakness. Oh, where the heck's Bravazo? Well, it's a good question. And a logical question. Look, value capper, the way it takes its running lines to make the odds line is done unconventionally. Now, it's done by software uh, code, and it's based on very sound principles of trying to find a horse that's coming to a race, right, rather than, oh, we take the best of the last three, or well, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's done unconventionally, but yet it does it by, quote unquote, software code or rules. And in this case, it said, no, we're only going to look at the Preakness number and we're going to look at the Louisiana Derby number. And those are the two weakest numbers or tied for weakest numbers in the in the Colts entire past performances. So we can play what if we'll say, well, come on now. He only ran a half of length off of Justify. Certainly, we can give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. And yes, Value Capital allows you to do this. Say, okay, we're going to say include the Risen Star with a good number and its best number in the allowance race that it won at Oak Lawn at a mile on January 13th. Okay, so we do that little thing and then Bravazo comes into the mix. I'm a little more comfortable with this lookout at the race, but notice it still doesn't come up to Justify and Tenfold. So, okay, so now I'm feeling pretty good about, about the look at the race. In other words, I give him Bravazo every benefit of the doubt. And again, the same thing about the Triple Crown being wearing on Justify could be wearing on Bravazo as well. What does the track profile for the Belmont Stakes, how does that inform us on whether we can find a decent value investment here? Well, the energy expenditure, which is a, um, a measure of how much energy the winning horse, or colt in this case, um, expends to the second call compared to its total energy expended. If you have a number like 50.40%, like last year's Belmont, or 49.59%, that's extreme, that's a late expenditure of energy. And you see how consistent that is. 50.21, 49.2. This is a what we call a late profile, okay? However, if you look at the beaten lengths at the second call, two lengths in, in 2017, three and a half lengths in 2016, 
uh, zero lengths when American Pharaoh won in 2015, a length and a half in 2014. This translates to looking for a colt that could be relatively close to the second call, yet expend its energy late. So when Taprit won, it was only four lengths off at the second call. Creator, uh, I'm sorry, two two point one lengths off. Creator was three and a half lengths off. Pharaoh on the lead. Tonalist in 2014, a length off. Okay, that's a pretty tight profile. Are there any colts that might look like that? Well, and again. I'm looking to justify is, is the best colt in the race, the best numbers, best everything, five for five. However, I've got a value investment potential. Most important part of that is potential up near the top. There's some other, you know, restoring hope in Noble Indy. Yeah, sure, at, you know, huge prices. But let's take a look at tenfold and look at its beaten lengths. Remember, we're looking at energy somewhere in 50 and change, Right. And not too far back at the second call, take a look at its energy expenditure in its last four races, especially the last two races. A mile and an eighth at the Arkansas Derby, 50.18, still expending late, even though it quote unquote quit. And 50.98 in the Preakness, in the slop. How far back is this? Colt at the second call? Well, it's only had four lifetime races, but zero, a length, a length and five lengths in the breakness. So I think that tenfold is a good fit for the Belmont in terms of how the Belmont requires, uh, where the uh, where the Belmont requires the horse to be positionally, the colt to be positionally, and how it expends its energy. However, there are some issues with betting tenfold, and they are justify must decline. Because even though we have all these fancy energy numbers, right, and we have, you know, uh, the, 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 the analysis that tenfold can reverse, it's a reverser like uh, um, uh, Funny Side and Empire Maker, right, that Justify still must decline, that, that the, the Triple Crown going through the Derby and then two weeks later, the Preakness, and then three weeks later, this mile and a half marathon after a very hard race in the Preakness will cause Justified to decline. Tenfold must get a good ride. Okay, there have been some criticisms about the ride he got in the Preakness that may have, may or may not cost him second. A few jumps from the wire, it looked like he was going to, if not win, get, get second, and then Bravazo caught him. And also, Justify must get pressured, I believe, to weaken him up a little bit, whether that comes from Noble Indy, uh, some, other, some other of the Colts may, may tend to press the other, Baffert's other horse um, as well. So that's a lot to ask. That's a lot of ifs. Plus, we have Gronkowski. Gronkowski started in England at uh, Newbury and Newmarket uh, on the turf, you know, okay. Then has had four um, races not on the turf. I believe those are um, synthetic surfaces at Newcastle and Kempton. Uh, it's got four wins in a row. I've got no fractions on this. I don't know what's going to happen. Can this be an upsetter? Sure. Is it another uncertainty factor in the race? Yes, it is. So couple that with the fact that the second morning line favorite is Hofburg. I don't have very good numbers on Hofburg. I know, you know, it won its maiden at second asking. One of the, uh, came second in the Florida Derby. Actually didn't have a very bad race in the Kentucky Derby. I don't get great pace numbers on it. Whenever I have... A, you know, look, it's not going to be the morning line favorite, but the second morning line favorite. Way down on my line, I get a little concerned. Someone's wrong here, and I'm not so arrogant to think that it might not be me, okay? So with all of that in mind, see, value capper gives a value capper price, which is to say, given its position on the line, given the extras and so forth, this is price you should be looking for it says eight to one uh, i would need at least ten to one to bet tenfold 
It'd break my heart. I mean, again, as a racing fan, I'd like to see Justify win. And it is the best-looking colt in the race. Restoring Hope, a Noble Indy. Oh, boy. I would have to get huge prices on that uh, to take, like, a recreational bet. It's possible that just the tenfold will get bet down to something like five to one, uh, you know, co-second favorites with Hofberg and maybe uh, seeing Gronkowski at six to one. That that kind of board can happen. And Restoring Hope and Noble India will go off at 30 to one or something. Would I take flyers on those? Yes. Serious bets? No. I, give me 10, 12 to one on tenfold. Yes, I think I would take a bet given everything. But remember, I'd be betting that Justify would need to be declining, would get some pressure, and Tenfold would need a decent ride. Um, I don't think I can get rid of Justify in the Exacta. It's the fulcrum in the race. It's a reversal winner and so forth. It would have to use it. Uh, if Justify is that tired, uh, the Tenfold, Restoring Hope, Noble Indy, the 759 Exacta box, you know, will pay enormous and trifecta box. Um would I count on that? Or do I think that's likely? No. But I think tenfold may be a decent bet. Again, 10, 12 to 1. In other words, if you <laughs> forgive the poor pun, a tenfold return would be necessary for me to bet tenfold. Now, again, uh, this is a mile and a half race. We've got a strong favorite on the top and justify. Look, on these big days, good value opportunities often appear in the undercards and let's take a look let me show you using value capper in real time some of the kind of opportunities that i look for now remember again before i take you through this i'm not doing picks i'm showing you some horses that i'm going to be looking at given the price given that they may be potential value horses again this is days before belmont day and again, these value investments are price dependent. No price, no bet. With that in mind, let me take you to the Value Capper software and we'll go over some of these undercard races. Okay, so here we are at the main screen of Value Capper, and this is the Belmont Stakes. Um, let me show you one race from the undercard on the Belmont card, the Ogden FIP Stakes. That's the third race at Belmont. American Gal just won uh, a grade one at Churchill at seven furlongs. Finishing just a few lanes behind it, just two lanes behind its second, is Ivy Bell, uh, the two horse. Now, um, she's a mare, actually, so forgive me. I'm going to call them horses. You, you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, I, I think that given the closeness of it, the, the morning line maker made Ivy Bell 12 to 1 on the morning line. I've got the mare at 9 to 2. I've got some extras on it. Uh, given its position on the line, given that it only ran two lengths away from American Gal, uh, given that I've got awfully uh, big questions on the big morning line favorite, uh, Abel Tasman. If I get something like 10 to 1 on Ivy Bell, I would take a shot at it. Now, again, concerns me about Abel Tasman all the way down there at 8 to 5 morning line favor. I've, you know, I don't really give it a shot. I think the numbers are old uh, on Abel Tasman and so forth. So there is one from the Belmont undercard I'll be looking at. But again, I'll need to get a good price on it. Going, I guess, in time order, uh, the park's eighth race. Now, this is an interesting uh, this is an interesting race. This is an unpressured race, meaning that six furlongs, and that's what the track profile at Parks, six furlongs. I'll take you through the details. Trust me on this one. Okay, that's why it says green unpressured up there. That means not only does the race come up as unpressured, but the profile says unpressured as well. Miss Avalon is a closer. The second horse down, or again, mares and fillies, Doctor of Mischief, uh, just had a really hard race last time. St. Main Event is on a layoff, bringing us to a filly that is, you know, technically fourth down there, but really it's it's a virtual tie, 9 to 2, 9 to 2, 9 to 2, then we go down to 5 to 1. Our contention line looks like it might go off at 9 to 1. 
they're not going to be betting this filly because they're going to look at the last race and say, ooh, look at that. It lost by seven and three quarters lengths. But yet it's got a lot of pluses. It's got what I call a type one pattern. Long story. You can find out more about that on the Value Capital Revolution basic training course and so forth. It's got nice running style. It's six to one in the morning line. I think it may go off at higher. I would need eight to one to bet it. But this is an idea where I'm betting a horse I like that the public shouldn't. It's betting against, it's running against vulnerable favorite. Again, the four horse, the, you know, the four um, uh, being the wrong running style, the three running a very hard last race, the two being on a layoff. I have to wait for my price. I'm going to have to, I'm going to need at least eight to one. And that's a value investment potential. I've got a wild one for you here. This is the Evangeline sixth race. Oh boy, Michael, we came in to hear about the triple crown and a champion. You're talking about a maiden race at Evangeline. You betcha. <laughs> okay. I've got three morning line favorites surrounding a huge long shot. Zydeco star. Love Zydeco music. Okay. Nine to two on my line, not too far off the other numbers. The contention is bonkers. Um, 20 to one morning line. Why would I even stop to look? Well, I noticed something. That even though its last race looks terrible, it made a huge move between the second call and the stretch. And the number it earned doing so was the best last race confirmed number in the field. So if you look at the other last race numbers, 146, 145, 147 for Zydeco Star, 149 Mighty Ghost, yes, that's a deserving eight to five favorite. Will it be able to repeat that? I don't know. It's never done it before. And by the way, we've got a first time starter in the race, the two, Harlan's Rhythm, which is well regarded by the morning line maker. However, give me, you know, I think, I, I think that this skelding will go off at 15, 20 to one, and I will take it gladly at that price. Again, a bit of a speculation, but these are the kind of races can be, you know, day makers. Now, I don't have every track on every card because, again, I'm doing this days before Belmont Day. Remember, here's the Belmont race, the Belmont stakes, justify way on top, big surprise, big surprise um, on all three um, biases, neutral, late. We see Justify still coming up. Even when we gave Bravazo his better races, doesn't uh, doesn't come way up. So my look out at the race, Justify, quote unquote, should win. If Justify declines, if Tenfold gets a decent ride, if Justify gets some pressure, Tenfold has a chance. I would need ten to one at least to bet. If Tenfold gets bet, I might have a flyer at 20, 30 to 1 and Restoring Hope Noble Indy. In the bottom parts of the exotics, I would tend to look to the closers, Vino Rosso and Blended Citizen, you know, third, fourth uh, positions. And that's a pretty simple uh, betting strategy for the Belmont Stakes. Again, best of luck to Justify. But if Justify falters, I'm going to be looking at tenfold, at tenfold to one. Well, that's it for this year's Belmont Stakes value capping rant. Ah, in my heart of hearts as a racing fan, I would love to see Justify win. I think he's the best colt in the race. I think his numbers are outstanding. Good gosh, he's five for five. You don't have to be an expert to see that. However, if he is declining or tired, I think the that tenfold might be a decent value investment at tenfold to one. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Win, lose, or draw. I don't really care what happens in any one race. I would like you to come away from this 
with the principles of value capping, how we use all of the handicapping tools, track profiles and uh, pace pressure and scenarios and all of that, put them all together to find a good value play. And I hope that's been helpful for you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, for letting me share my thoughts about this wonderful, great game and potentially great Triple Crown champion with you. Until next time, this is Michael Pozzola saying, wait for your prices, let the bet make you. I'll see you soon.